I am Vinny Todorich, and folks, your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. It may be soft and succulent when we start this process, but hang in there. Before long, you're going to be lean and mean, and that's a money-back guarantee. Think about that because you didn't pay anything to be here to begin with. You can do it. Folks, this guy has been on the show at least twice, if not three times before. Um, hell, I should just have him on as a co-host at some point. Uh, <laughs> he's always got great information. Kind of like me, he's been in and around the fitness game forever in a week. Uh, and we're going to talk about something a little different today uh, that's going on out there. And when he wrote to me and said, hey, this is what's going on. I said, hey, man, let's, let's get on and talk about it. I'm talking about the great Johnny Bowden. How you doing, buddy? Oh, man, I'm great. It's so good to be with you. Same here. Uh, last oh. time we spoke, we were still going. Everybody was still locked down during COVID. Remember that? They were. And we didn't talk about that that much then, did we? No, because it was like everybody was talking about it. Every time I did anyone else's podcast, it was COVID, 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 COVID. I kind of stayed away from it because, you know, it's one of those things when you don't know what you're talking about, you can only make a jackass out of yourself. Absolutely true. <laughs> and I still don't know what I'm, you know, when it comes to COVID, you know, I, I remember one time uh, and yeah, I mentioned it wasn't ivermectin. It was, what was the hydroxychloroquine? Hydroxychloroquine. I was having a private conversation with a friend of mine and, um, it was early on, there was no vaccine talk. So you got to think back, folks, you got to think before there was a vaccine. And, you know, it was just everyone was trying to figure it out. You know, a couple of doctors said hydroxychloroquine. And I went, Ooh, and I looked it up and I went, Oh, hydroxychloroquine. Turns out, I've had that drug before, because when you travel internationally, like if you go to a third world country, they give you that shot. And they give it to you so that you don't get malaria or something like that. I can't remember. I think it was malaria. And I went, oh, I've had that shot before. I wonder if it holds up. I'm like, do I need it again? It's been years since I've had it. Um, no, it wasn't a shot. It was a pill. I'm sorry. It wasn't a yeah. shot. I've had that pill. Because they, that when you go uh, travel uh, to, to third world countries, there's a few shots you take. And then they'll say, take this pill for three or four days prophylactically. Yeah. And then take that. That pill is hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. So I went. I remember taking this mm -hmm. and then I started seeing stuff on the news going, this is an unproven drug and we cannot have people take this and people are going to die if they take it. And I remember thinking, really? Because they kind of handed this to me as if it was M&Ms when I was going to India. And now the news is telling me that this isn't. So I went back, I went back to, you know, Google the best pharmacist in the world, Google. Right. It's like, how long is how long has hydroxychloroquine been around? And it's like, oh, it's been around since the 1950s. And I went, hell, something I just saw in the news said that if you even look at this drug, you know, they, they, they've never tested it. And they, you know, and I, I just- Great place to start this discussion. You, you couldn't have hit the nail on the head more with a great example. Right. I don't have any particular opinion on hydroxychloroquine. Oh, me either, by the way. Right. So my, my point is more a meta point here, which yeah. is that that drug got demonized almost from the day we heard of it. Yeah. And I think, honestly, it was largely because Trump endorsed it and there was, a, you know, huge feelings about Trump and anything that he said. Uh, and, you know, that was not necessarily the 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 badge of credibility that he recommended that i get that but hydroxychloroquine many doctors i've talked to many health professionals i've talked to who are not crazy who are not right-wing conspiracy theorists who don't think covid's all a hoax have told me that they have gotten great results with hydroxychloroquine mixed with certain nutrients like i don't know if it's zinc i'm not sure what the protocol is it was zinc. Okay, so there were, and it was just shut down as disinformation before right. it even got a hearing. And that's kind of what I wrote the article about because 
it, it isn't so much whether you agree with this information or disagree with it. It's once we start censoring discussions about medicine and health, and I'm going to give you a million examples. I know you can give me a million examples. Sure. We are on a very dangerous, slippery slope that doesn't lead to a good place. You have 12-year-olds at YouTube or whoever, the, you know, the kids have just got out of journalism school deciding what is real and what is not real in medicine and health. You have them taking down things that are considered disinformation if it doesn't go to the party line. Now, you and I have fought the establishment on many issues, starting with fat, not ending with it. Cholesterol, statin drugs, low-fat diets, the government hasn't had a wonderful track record of telling us the truth when it comes to health and nutrition. Absolutely. And I don't want anybody taking my YouTube videos down because I'm talking about vitamin D. Right. And because I don't want them taking my videos down talking about vitamin D, that means I have to fight for the rights of anybody who wants to go on there and say ivermectin. Hydro you know what? There's no way to legislate against stupidity. People have got to be able to look at this information and make decisions for themselves. Keeping them from hearing it is not the answer. And it just makes us even more divided. And it makes it where there's a world in which there is an official version of information. And that's the only one that gets talked about. That scares me. I grew up in the fifties. We used to hear about the re-education camps in the Soviet Union and people, you know, had these revolutionary ideas. They were sent to be re-educated so that they would learn the truth. That's what this looks like to me. And it's very, it should scare every, whether you're on the right or the left, that should scare all of us. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's so weird. And, you know, we just had a thing near where I live where they took some statues down. Um, and I'm not going to get it because I don't do politics. Okay. Um, but uh, they, they took down, uh, you know, um, there was a, a Lee statue of, you know, General Lee. And uh, they also took down um, one with um, uh, Meriwether and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the two explorers. Uh, I, I can't think of it right Lewis now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lewis and Clark? Lewis and Clark, thank you. And I could, I could tell you Meriwether. I can't tell you his first name. And I, I, was, I was befuddled. I went, well, Lewis and Clark, were they racist? I never heard anything. Well, the reason they took that statue down was because someone said that they were upset because... They had, um, who was it? Did, did Pocahontas or Sacagawea, one of those. I can't remember this history. But they said she looked subservient. She was down below them, right? And <laughs> they said that looks subservient. And when you look at the statue, I pass the statue every day since I moved to this area. They're standing and she's doing like a scout thing where she squatted down with her hand up here, looking out. You know, she she was their lookout. She knew the area. She so the statue was, I guess, accurate, but someone went, Oh, she's subservient. She was now, Johnny, she yeah, was like this looking out. She wasn't like this in fear of them whipping her with a bowl. I get it. You understand, but the uh, statue needs to come down because she's not as tall as they are on the statue. And I went, wow, are we really there? It, yeah, it, we're there, yeah, man. This is a very scary, yeah, we are. We really are. Sometimes it's mind boggling. So but the night, uh, let me just finish this. The night before the statues came down, I was at someone's house for dinner. And uh, I said, man, you know, it's a shame, you know, we, we need to know history so that we can correct history. But it seems like we're, we're trying to erase history. It just doesn't seem right to me. And this woman said, well, you know that statue of Lee, they only put that up in the nineteen, like the late nineteen sixties. I said, really? She goes, and by the way, this is a woman who's lived here for. She goes, as a matter of fact, that whole city block was a block where black people lived, and they kicked those people out, and they turned that block into a block for the, this this man who was against slavery and or was for slavery and the whole thing and the war and all. I said, are you kidding me? They, they kick black people out of their homes. I said, obviously, 
if they took that land, they had to give them money for it. That's what the government do. Whenever they take your land, they give you fair value. They, obviously, they at least gave them, oh, no, they just kicked them out. They kicked them out. And I said, and you're telling me this happened in the late 19, 1960? She goes, maybe even later. So that statue is not even, and she's telling me this whole thing as if it's a truth. And you looked it up? Came home and looked it up. The statue had been there since the 1920s. Mm -hmm. It was commissioned in the 1918s and the statue had been there since the 1920s. And um, they didn't kick anyone out from what I can tell. It was just land that was someone gave the land to the city. Someone owned the land, gave it to the city. And I went, OK, this woman's telling now if I'm not a guy who's willing to come home and go, that didn't sound right to me. This is a small thing, Johnny, but this this is exactly what happens on the Internet. If I didn't come home and go, okay, something does not sound right to me. I must see, you know, I can't believe that this is happening. And it turns out that it was just a story she was telling me to, to make herself right in a moment. It this happens all day long on the internet. People well, make up shit. Make up shit or shit goes for, I'll give you a great example. We're talking about COVID ivermectin. There's another drug right. that's been demonized. Um, I'm not sure if it works or not. I, I've heard from responsible, intelligent people, again, used in small dosages with certain nutrients, they found it to be very effective. I have no opinion on that. Here's what I have an opinion on. Um, there is, there are news items today going on about how everywhere in the Midwest, people are overdosing on ivermectin and they are crowding the hospitals, particularly in Oklahoma, and no, but the COVID patients can't get in, gunshot victims can't get in, people are dying in the emergency room for all these overdoses of ivermectin in people in Oklahoma. Right. They, yeah. they did what you did. The, this was, a, it was actually Reason Magazine, I think. Um, they, they did a little investigation of that. One doctor in Oklahoma City was interviewed for this article, and he had seen a case of a guy who, who had overdosed on ivermectin. At the same time, he was commenting, boy, there's a lot of people here coming in for COVID. And before they traced that story, that story became there's people dying of ivermectin. There's, they're overflowing it. There's no, there's no rooms in the beds. They're crowding the ICUs. It was a completely made up story that started with this germ of truth, this one interview with this one doctor who mentioned that he had seen one person have an overdose. There's no thousands of people overdosing on ivermectin. It's not happening. Well, and somebody, let, let me let me just jump in on that story. I'm gonna, there's going to be a lot of jumping in with me and you here. I got a tweet two nights ago, but I'm going to try to move this podcast ahead by a week so it's not too old. But um, I, I, someone tweeted to me the other night, did you see where Joe Rogan um, took a horse medicine and almost died. And I went, I, I just wrote back Jesus H Christ. Oh, my God, something like that. Right. Well, I came back to my Twitter an hour later to finish up tweak and everyone went, No, he didn't. He was taking ivermectin. Apparently, some people are taking the dosage that they give to farm animals because they can't get it from doctors. And obviously, Joe Rogan is a guy who can get it from a doctor because you know, when you're a celebrity, you can basically get what you want when you want. We all know that, right? So, the, you know, the story started with some guy saying he almost died from taking a horse pill, uh -huh. you know, of something. Sort. And I, all I did was went, oh, my God, I flamed the fires by doing that. I immediately went back on and went, oh, wait a minute. I am so sorry. This changes the whole thing. You know, if he was taking a medication made for humans, that's a different story. A am I wrong? Do you even know that story? Am I, I know the whole story. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, is that what happened? I mean, was he on a horse liniment of some sort or was he? No, I, I think he did take some ivermectin in a responsible way with a human dose can, with the nutrients it's supposed to be taken with. I think he got a lot of flack. Uh, and, and you got to you know this better than anybody. You're going to get flack if you go left or if you go right or if you stand still, you're going to get flack on the Internet. That's just right. the way. But I think what what they hit him up about was like, oh, he's a celebrity. He has uh, 
access to all these treatments and and they were kind of like dishing him for for availing himself of the medicine and the resources that he has saying oh yeah he was he was not so pro vaccine but now when he gets sick he does all this and it's kind of a nonsensical argument if you ask me. right right so you know it's it, yeah, he it, wasn't by the way he was not and this really brings us also to the crux of what we were going to talk about or what we are talking about he's not an ant there is a position between being an anti-vaxxer and i'm going to do everything the vaccine companies tell me to do and they're always safe there is a middle ground in there right and, and why we are not capable of talking about that middle ground is right. it, is that's what troubles me not not the disc not the material not whether ivermectin is safe and whether hydroxychlorine should have been banned or whether it should have been used or whether vaccines are good or bad it's whether or not we can't discuss this as if there is a range of opinion there is some nuance in the discussion there is some uh gray shades in the arguments it's black and white man you're either an anti-vaxxer or you're going to get every booster shot they tell you to get for the next hundred years because there's going to be another one every six months. Right. There's going to be a position in between that, and and that's the one I want to stake out and and talk about. Well, you know that's what we're talking about here, folks. We have Johnny Bowden on. Uh, he's been on the show a few times. Very smart dude, and um, yeah, we need to get to the bottom of this uh, disinformation. Here's some information that's not disinformation. This is good information. Bell Campo, bellcampo.com is a long running sponsor of the show. They, they came on at the end of last year. As a matter of fact, uh, Anya Fernald was on the show. And then after she was on, on the show, she noticed sales went up because of this show. And she said, Hey, you know, we we're done with our advertising budget budget for the year. But you know, can we come in and just advertise the last five or six weeks? And I went, come on in. And um, she came in and we have had a relationship ever since. Love having these people as a sponsor. I use them. We use them here at the house. My mom who's down on my mom and dad who's down in Louisiana, their meat supply got cut off because well, there's not a lot of refrigeration down there right now because of Ida. My mom signed up at Bel Campo. She bought 300 plus dollars of meat because they have a generator and they their deep freezer is still working. And she knows she could get good fresh meat to the house. And she doesn't have to worry about it. Not only that, this meat is a cut above. And when I say a cut above, we're not just talking organic grass fed. Anya Fernald has some of the best meat I've ever tasted, bar none, even the chicken, everything they do there is amazing. Go check it out. Bell Campo, B E L C A M P O, bellcampo.com. Promo code Vinny will get you 15% off your entire order. Um, if you spend more than $100 after the discount, so you buy $120, $125, that'll put you over $100 after your 15% discount, you'll get free shipping. And that's not a small feat whenever you're, you're uh, shipping meat, they have to pack it, it's frozen, what have you. Free shipping from Bell Campo over $100. Promo code Vinny, 15% savings. We're talking to Johnny Bowden. Johnny, let's let's get more into this December. You, you and I, we're, we're both huffed. You know, you, you get a Jew and a WAP together and you, we get all huffed up. You know, you get all excited. Especially and, for and I get excited because I get accused of things. You know, I'm doing a movie right now about fake meat and, you know, this whole thing. And as a matter of fact, um, I was telling a friend of mine um, who, and I don't talk about my politics, no one knows if I'm on the right, left or middle. Um, but my friend uh, is, is, is well on, on the left of, of the equation. And uh, she was asking me about my movie. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's coming along nice. And I said, like, well, tell me about it. I said, like, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about all these politicians saying that, you know, we should have meatless Monday and take meat out of the diet and no more meat and get rid of meat. I said, even our vice president, Kamala Harris said, you know, let's get rid of meat. And she goes, no, she didn't. She's never one. It's like, I don't think you understand. I have her on video in my movie saying, 
And, and someone dubbed that. I was like, no, she was saying that throughout her whole campaign. It was all part of the the Green New Deal and this and that. We got to get rid of meat and we got to eat. She goes, she never once, I was like, you, I don't think you're understanding me. She said that emphatically. As a matter of fact, we found her saying that 15 or 20 different times in interviews. We've only used one or two of them in the movie, but you can't say that politicians are not saying that when they're saying that. And this woman says, well, I know my truth. <laughs> okay. Dude. You know your truth? Or do you know the truth? Yeah, you know, Daniel Patrick Monaghan was a very famous senator from New York, and he, he had a famous saying, which was that every man is entitled to their own opinion, but they're not entitled to their own facts. And <laughs> he would be turning in his grave today because everybody has their own facts now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but someone is telling me that what yeah. I what I was saying was emphatically wrong. She kept saying that's categorically wrong. She never said that. There's no way she's ever said that. And it's like, should I send you footage? And I did. I, I, I sent her footage. Never heard back from her. You know, but the thing is, let's, let's talk about the fake meat thing since you brought it up, because there's a perfect sure. example like, of, of, I mean, when you talk about sheep and following like a meme, this notion that this crap is in any way good for us, better for the planet, better for our bodies, or in any way superior to or equal to humanely raised grass-fed meat is such a it's it's such a made-up, ridiculous notion, and yet everybody by oh it's better for the planet oh it's it isn't we've looked at emission figures we've looked at things and it's the same kind of thing with palm oil. Like there's a huge movement to ban palm oil because it's so bad for the planet and it does all these terrible things. And then when you look, you go, oh my God, wait a minute, it's the most sustainable plant. It, it is basically the olive oil of Asia and Africa. Yeah. It, it's farmed in Malaysia very sustainably. <laughs> they protect more forests than we do. And it's just not true, man. And yet it is, it's one of those things that makes people feel better. They go, oh, we'll blame palm oil or we'll blame meat and emissions for everything. And then uh, we can we can feel good about ourselves. We can protest, we can buy this crap, impossible meat or whatever it is and, and feel that we're doing something for the planet. And in fact, they're not at all. And they're certainly not doing anything for the health. Well, you know, it, when you think about it, the, the whole, Beyond Burgers, Impossible Meat, and all of the stuff comes out of, now they're calling it the plant-based community, but it's the vegan community. Yes. And they, you know, the vegan community and, and plant-based, whatever you want to call it, their mission was always, hey, man, we're telling you just to eat good whole foods, eat vegetables, eat fruit, eat these whole healthy grains, sugar's healthy, you know, all of this stuff is healthy, but it's all real food. Now they're telling us, eat fake food, eat this manufactured food, eat this food that's causing more greenhouse gases, because it's all manufactured in a mill. It's all you know, they're spewing off this stuff is not made with fairy dust. They're in mill. And by the way, a lot of the ingredients because I'm doing a whole movie about this stuff is being shipped from China and everywhere else. They're shipping this stuff around the world. When you want to talk about shipping, now you're talking more greenhouse gases. Yeah. And they're telling you that this is better for you and better for the environment. And it's not better for either. That's this right. information, correct? 100%. I couldn't agree more. And this is where we get it. This is the problem with the whole notion of disinformation. Somebody's got to decide what's disinformation and what's not. I don't think anybody should have that job. I don't want anybody telling me uh, you shouldn't hear this information about this drug or this protocol or this vitamin or this nutrient because it's an unproven treatment and you're not able to decide for yourself. So uh, we, the government, are going to decide by not letting you hear the argument for or against that. That would knock every one of us who are skeptical about the measurement of cholesterol, every one of us who's skeptical about the universal prescription of statin drugs for anybody whose cholesterol is over 201, anyone who's skeptical about not recommending vitamin D, let's, can, can I just, one second on this one, because this is a kind of sure. a perfect example of what makes me crazy. Absolutely. The new deaths from COVID in the hospitals, they are touting 
the figures that show that 98% of them are unvaccinated. And they are drawing from that conclusion, 98% of the people who are dying are unvaccinated. What do you make of that? You should get vaccinated. Okay, fair enough. 98% of people who have died from COVID have vitamin D deficiencies. Did you say B or not D? I'm not about that. Every, every country that was studied, there were four that I know of. In every country that was studied, 98, 98.5% of COVID deaths, vitamin D deficiency. Is any period in the government telling everyone in America to take 5,000 IUs of vitamin D? Because the evidence for that is just as strong as the, if you're going to use, hey, 98% of people who died didn't have vaccinated. 98% of people didn't have vitamin D. You don't tell them to get vaccinated, but don't, Tell them about, about but you about see, you, you you don't get to push a narrative that way because the other day I saw one where they said um, this woman, she was under fifty. They did it again. They've done this several times. All the time. Um, she, she was uh, less than fifty years old. Um, she had no underlying health problems, and she died of COVID. There have been people like that. There's no question but, about but it. But here's the deal, Johnny. They showed a picture of this poor woman. Number one. Uh, I'm sure this woman wouldn't have signed off on her picture being in the paper. The woman, you could tell from her face and her shoulders, she was morbidly obese. Okay. Okay. She had no underlying conditions. No underlying conditions. Oh. You're, you're morbidly obese. By definition, without taking one blood test, I can tell you, because the word morbid is right in, in your problem, you have at least fatty liver disease. You have at least type two diabetes. You have at insulin least sleep apnea. Resistance. Guaranteed you have insulin resistance. Insulin resistance up the yin yang. These are five or six that could cause a cytokine storm, but it was reported that this woman had no underlying conditions and she was 45 years old. See, here's the thing. It makes no sense. Not only does it make no sense, um, it, it doesn't pass the smell test. So we, I, when I came on to discuss the great cholesterol myth recently, we, right. talk, I talk, we talked about the research uh, that's been done since the 70s on insulin resistance and how it is actually the underlying factor to a whole host of metabolic diseases, starting with hypertension, prediabetes, obesity, heart disease, Alzheimer's, and even lung, kidney, and liver disease. Insulin resistance is at the core of all of them. We talked about the fact that 88%, and you can Google this, it's all over the, this was published in Science Digest, 88% of Americans are not metabolically healthy, meaning they have some degree of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance underlies every single comorbidity for COVID. When they talk about these people are perfectly healthy, I don't buy it. Because if 88% of us have some degree of insulin resistance, it's unlikely that none of these people had any, like the person you gave the example to, that's not an underlying morbidity. She's obviously got insulin resistance, obesity, as you point out, inflammation, maybe type two diabetes. Of course, those are underlying conditions. And that's one of the things that makes me so crazy about the approach to COVID that no one is talking about. How about strengthening the underlying infrastructure. How about doing something about our immune system? Go get vaccinated if you want, but does that mean we can't talk about the ways that we can build natural immunity? That's off the table. All we're gonna do is chase vaccinations. Every six months, there's gonna be a new booster. Every year, there's gonna be a new variant. You wanna just go that way? Or do you wanna say, what can I do to make this house a little, you lived in the South. What happens when you have a tropical storm or a hurricane? Do you go, I'm gonna do everything I can to like get out of town? Or do you go, let me fortify my house for the next time this happens. So I have a better chance of my house standing after the storm. Yeah. And that's the part that absolutely baffles me and baffles, I think, everyone like you and me that care about nutrition health. How the hell are they not talking about doing those things? You know, Johnny, you reminded me of what my mom told me uh, last week. Um, she, you know, once your generator is running for like, you know, 72 hours or something, you know, the, the Generac people come around and change the oil and make sure everything is working right. You know, it's part of the service they do down there. And, um, the guy was telling my mom and dad, it's like, yeah, you know, after the storm, everyone wants a Generac, you know, it, you know, you're, you're what you're in your mid sixties. You look great. 
I, I have no idea. How old are you, John? I'm 175 in November. Jesus Christ. You see, I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something no, way wrong. No, I'm going to look the same. What are you talking about, man? All right, so you're 75. You, you look amazing. You've Thank kept you. yourself in incredible shape your entire life. You don't try to buy a generator after the storm came through. That's like putting a condom on after you have sex. And you go, well, I'll put it on after. I don't know how she got pregnant. It's like uh, when, when, when in March of 2020, when everybody got locked down and they were talking about immunity, I put out, I don't know, 12 videos on YouTube all about boosting immunity. This was all new to people. I've been doing this 30 years. I didn't just discover quercetin and vitamin D and vitamin C and melatonin and, and elderberry and all the other things I take every fucking day. Yeah. I didn't just find those things. It's not an accident. You know, I got COVID and I got better in a few days. And I'm not saying that, that you know, maybe there was some genetics in that. Maybe there was some luck in that. Maybe, but still, I, I always figured the likelihood is if I catch this thing, this is before the vaccine, I'm going to be in the 98.5% of people who survive it. Yeah. And that's what happened. And, yeah. and I don't think it's an accident that I've been fortifying the system that fights it every day for the last 38 years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember the first time someone I had said, a good you know, defensive army is what I mean. And so do you, yeah. you know, Look, we take vitamin C and zinc, and people go, oh, did you start taking that with COVID? It's like, no, that's just... No, dude, we've been taking we take. it all our lives. That's yeah. right, exactly. As a matter of fact, I've been working on one at my vitamin company to come out as a package. We're putting out, um, by the time this comes out, it will be out. We're putting out our DHA, EPA with krill. And uh, the next thing I'm putting out for the flu season is a combination of vitamin C with zinc, you know, because people want that. Now, now they want it, you know? Now they you know, now everyone wants it, but guys like me, guys like you, we've been doing this for years, right? And people look at us and go, oh, you're the lucky ones, or you guys have special genetics. I don't have special genetics. I have a rack right behind me that I spend time on. I have a bike right here. I have a rowing machine there. I have running shoes, and I go outside. You know, th this is what you do. You know, someone said to me not long ago, they go, is, is exercise really that important? I'll say, you don't have to exercise, but you also don't have to brush your teeth or wipe your ass. But we do it, <laughs> don't we? It's a good habit. You, look, if you stop wiping your ass, stop brushing your teeth, you're not going to have very many friends, right? We, 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 those are habits. Those are not necessary. They're habits. One is good for your oral hygiene. The other one is good for your hygiene overall. We do it to stay healthy. Yet we go, ah, you know, I'll get to exercise next week. Well, get to wiping your ass next week. How does that work? Well, yeah, well, you've dealt with this your whole life as a trainer and, and getting people to change or to develop habits is, it's like threading the needle. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very tricky thing because you're dealing with, um, I don't want to call it laziness. It's people get into habitual ways of living and then yeah. inserting something new into that is an effort. I know this because I've done it myself in the last year or two on a number of fronts. I, I became a meditator. I started walking twice a day with the dog in the hills in, in, in Woodland Hills. It's like a hike. I didn't do any of those things. And they took and, and even I, who takes vitamins and works out and, and plays tennis two hours a day, I still had to work to develop those new habits, meditation, journaling, walking. And I made a conscious effort of doing it. I just did it every day until it became second nature. Um, I, you know, I teach this all the time, intention habits. Like I wanted to start drinking eight ounces of water on a rising every day. I thought it was a great habit great thing to do just to get into the habit of it. I never remembered to do it. So I learned to do things like put this on the on the stand at the nightstand in the bed. So the first thing I see in the morning is this. I always drink it now. It's become a habit. I turned it into a habit. I, I, I hacked my brain to do the things that we need to do to make things habits like see the thing there every day, be reminded of it, put the water on the on the bed. And if you if you can build those habits, but you and I both know they're not easy. They take a, a you need to commit to doing them, and you need to do them regularly until you're not thinking about them anymore. Yeah, yeah. Look, when people call me to do consults, they'll you know when I get done with the consult, they go, "Yeah, I'm going to start tomorrow." 
and I'll say to him, well, it's, it's only 11 o'clock where I am. Um, how about you start today? Ah, I need to start tomorrow. It's like, why? If, if you put your hand on a burning stove, you're going to pull it off right away because it's burning. Why would you wait until tomorrow to, to take your hand off the stove? You wouldn't. You're would, Jesus Christ, I need to remove my hand right away. It's a reflex that re you can start a good habit at any time. Yes. At any time. I've always said about my dog, my dog is always learning something. It could be positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement. Absolutely. The bottom line is, Bonzo is always learning something. Right? So might as well make it all positive. Just do positive <laughs> things. And, and it's so difficult to get people to say, Hey, I'll just start tomorrow. But well, you know, the other thing about it is, is the habits you and I try to teach people to to uh, develop, they don't pay off the next day. So we're really dealing also with a kind of collective psyche that says, I want it now, instant gratification. That's why everybody buys things on credit. That's why you get likes on Twitter and you, you just want that hit right now. And the habits we're talking about do not show a return on investment the next day. They show it 30 years later, like 30 years of me doing this, I look different than everybody else my age that didn't do it. But I didn't look different the first day I started doing it. And people who start exercising don't all of a sudden have muscles and they don't all of a sudden have less brain fog. And people who go on a higher fat, lower carb diet don't all of a sudden feel better. These things actually take an investment in you in, in yourself. You have to actually invest the time, just like savings accounts. When we, you know, yeah. tell kids, just put five dollars away, compounded interest, you'll be a millionaire. They don't it, it's very hard to think that way in our society. And that's part it's, of it. It's impossible, Johnny. I, I remember um when I got out of football, and I've told this, I told it in, uh, in my book, and I've I've talked about it on the podcast. <clears throat> I um I kept working out. Right when I finished playing football, I kept going, still going to the college gym, the same gym where I was powerlifting the week before. And I just kept bench pressing, squatting, deadlifting, and the whole thing. Except um, when I wasn't on the football team anymore, I didn't get to eat on the training table. So my diet went from eggs and ham and meat and <laughs> all the good stuff to ramen noodles. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess six or eight months passed, still working out, but I had a gut. For first time in my life, I didn't have a six pack, I had a gut. And I put on significant weight. And that was when I started my weight loss journey to to learn I was still in college getting a degree in exercise physiology and nutrition. And I'm sitting there going, I'm getting a degree in this, but I went to a drugstore to buy a magazine to figure out how to lose weight, which didn't seem right to me. And that's when I started my whole process, right. But it I, I knew I had to do what I had to do. And I started losing the weight pretty quickly. I started eating right pretty quickly. But then I got I was coming up, I, I guess I was probably 27. And I started saying to myself, why am I working this hard? Why I'm, I'm going to the gym and working out as if I'm Rocky Balboa trying to beat Apollo Creed. And I'm eating like that. And it's like, what am I doing? I'm not, I'm not even doing anything. What am I doing? I'm riding a bike like a madman. Why am I doing this? Why? And for like six months, I kept saying to myself, I need to slow it down. People started telling me, Hey, man, you can't, you can't, you, can't, you know, this 1980s, mm -hmm. you can't keep going like this. Can't keep going. You're going to wear yourself out. I was going to Aspen every summer, leading people on hikes. I'm doing all this stuff. And I started saying to myself, these people might be right. I need to slow down a bit. I need to take it easy. And then something miraculous happened. I went to my 10 year high school reunion about a year later. And I looked at me. And I looked at the other captain from my football team, I was one of the captains. I looked at the cheerleaders who used to be the cheerleaders. I looked at everyone, they started to look like their parents, they were getting a bit jolly. They were putting on some middle aged spread and we weren't even 30 yet. And the one thing I did, and I love these people to death was when I left that reunion, I said, I will never fucking stop. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Why would you? Yeah. But but you understand how that works. You know, you, you know, people start saying, Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? 
But well, I'm not stopping. I can tell you that. I'm 59 in a couple of days. I'm still not stopping. I'm going to keep it going. Right? You're well, what's, the it going. what's the alternative? Let's think about it. You know, I always, I always, when I, when I was doing one-on-one -on -one weight loss coaching all the time, I would point out to people that even if you could somehow snap your fingers, have a magic pill, and suddenly be the weight you want it to be, you'd have to maintain it. Yeah. You'd have to eat differently. You'd have to do all the things we're telling you to do now. It doesn't just stay that way. So why not do them? I would say to people, start doing them now, because even when you get to the perfect weight, you're going to have to live differently. Let's start now. And, and it is it is a difficult process and it really requires people to get up against their own glass ceilings that they built, you know, for themselves, what they can do. And, oh, my metabolism is slowing down. I'm getting older. I don't have the time on my gut or my genes or whatever. And people aren't really accustomed to going, okay, this is what's before me. This is what I have to work with. Let's go. Yeah. You're exactly, look, I always tell people, life is not a destination, it's, it's a journey. The destination is death, might as well enjoy enjoy the ride. That's exactly. You know? right. And, uh, you know, you, you can make it whatever you want. Johnny, uh, I'm gonna do a quick break here. I want to get more into the disinformation thing. We, we kind of okay. walked away from it because we, we started chatting about that. Uh, and I'll start off by telling you some of the things that happened to me. Okay. And uh, I'm a nobody. So I can only imagine what's happening out there, folks. Villa Capelli has is the longest running sponsor of the show. They've been with us for like nine years. Um, I love this product Villa Capelli. Uh, this is not palm oil, although palm oil is good. This is olive oil, another great oil, probably the greatest oil on earth. I don't even get people. I don't trust people who tell me they don't like olives and olive oil. Just be honest with you. Olive oil is the best oil. And but here you, you want to talk disinformation right in the middle of an ad. In this country, you're able to cut olive oil up to 40% and still write on the front. Yeah, it's 100% pure olive oil. Because as a matter of fact, the 60% olive oil is 100% pure. The other 40% is seed oils, the stuff that causes inflammation, the stuff that causes problems in your system. Villa Capelli is not one of those oils. It's not a disinformation oil. It's an information oil. You want Villa Capelli olive oil. You want to save 10% on Villa Capelli? Go to villacapelli.com, put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, 10%. If after the discount code, you've spent $100, and if you buy a three liter 10 and maybe some, some of the herbs de la Provence, something like that, you'll get to about 115. That'll give you like 105, $106. You'll get free shipping. So that's a three liter 10. You know how much it would cost to ship that? That's a lot of money. You'll save that, plus you'll save the 10%. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing. As uh, Johnny's people say, bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's my people. <laughs> I think it's it, your... His people work for my people as accountants. <laughs> that's what they do. I've seen the movies. Folks, Villa Capelli olive oil, 10% off. I don't know how I'm going to get canceled on a daily basis. I, I, I have no idea. It, I guess if you get the Jewish guy on the other end laughing, then it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't piss them off. That's, um, that's, no worry. So, um, Johnny, I, I'll tell you a couple of things that's happened to me. Tell me. Yeah. Um, I, I know I get shadow banned on Twitter constantly. When my Twitter account started, it was, you know, before I knew it, I had a thousand people, then 5,000, then 10,000. And then it just started as my thing built, it got to, 20,000, 25, it got to like 30 or I don't know where it is, 30 or 40,000. And it stopped dry. And I had my people look into it and they said, it's interesting for every person that comes on, they remove someone. Right? Uh, my Instagram, same thing, building, building, build, because I started Instagram late, right? Mm -hmm. It builds, builds, builds. And then I got to like 25,000 pretty quickly stops dry, you know, for every person I get, they knock a person or two off. And why is that? Okay. We don't know. I, I'm told that I'm paranoid. Okay. Now, here's the crazy part. Unbeknownst to me, I got a I got put on Wikipedia. 
Yeah. Right? Once you write a book, you do a couple of movies, you're on Wikipedia. And then one day someone said to me, hey, you, you know, on Twitter, someone said to me, your Wikipedia has been taken down. I went, really? So I went over to Wikipedia and sure enough, my Wikipedia was taken down. So I had my people look into it. As a matter of fact, I got my attorney to look into it. And he got in touch with the person at Wikipedia who pulled it down, just some, some asshole, just some guy. And he said, Yeah, we couldn't substantiate anything about Vinnie Tartaret as being true. Mm -hmm. And my attorney said, Well, it said on his Wikipedia that he wrote a book. And he goes, Yeah, but we can't reference that. I was like, Well, you can go right to Amazon, they're selling the book. You know, and he, he's got a, a auto audible book, and he's got this end of the book, the book is, is everywhere it's, it's a best selling book. Yeah, I don't know. We can't see that. I, I don't know. What else you got? Well, he's done a movie. Well, I, I, who says, or he says, well, where can I go and find this movie? Everywhere. It's on airliners. It's, <laughs> it's on Amazon. It's on iTunes. It's everywhere. We don't know that. We can't see that. Um, everything, everything about me could be substantiated by going somewhere on the internet or finding it in an article or somewhere. And they're saying, no, it can't simultaneously, I was put on something called rational wiki, which is where people can go on and write disinformation about me, and just put up lies, yet I can't make that go away. Wait, what is this rational wiki? Oh, yeah, there's something called rational wiki. I'm on rational wiki. They call me a, 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 a guy that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a cholesterol denier. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I deny cholesterol. To and that's called Rational Wiki. Rational Wiki. Yeah, it, it's like a disinformation site about people who they hate. So I've been pulled off of Wikipedia and simultaneously put on Rational Wiki. I'm not the only one. Uh, people like, um, uh, God, uh, uh, Malcolm Kendrick, right oh, yeah. when mine got pulled off, his got pulled off too. And he was put on Rational Wiki. So you're telling me that this stuff is not going on? No, I'm not telling you. I actually came on to say this is going on way more than it needs Yeah, to this is real. Everywhere. This is very, very real. Um, they will take down, they might take down, I'm doing this for YouTube and my podcast. There's a good possibility that this will be taken down because we mentioned ivermectin mm -hmm. and hydroxychloroquine. They just mentioning that they might take this one down. It's we'll see. It's frightening. Yeah. That's what's going on out there. I'll give you know back when before COVID, you know there was still a huge brouhaha over vaccinations and autism. That used to be a year. It still is, I guess, a huge yeah. debate. Um, it was pr pretty much the argument against vaccines, such as the argument was, was deplatformed and and demonized and made into like, oh, they're just anti-vaxxers. I can't tell you, Vinny, the number of doctors that I've interviewed. I mean, household name, like A-list top guys and, and women. Right. And I've said to them after the interview, offline, I said, listen, I have a theory. The liver has a system called the cytochrome P450 detoxification system. It's a two-phase system and it gets rid of toxins in the body and it does it in these two phases. And everything I know about human physiology says that there are huge variations from person to person. We've known this since the 50s, since biochemical individuality was written by Roger Williams, that the size of the pancreas, the size of the thyroid, the size of the testes, all these things vary in normal people, they vary enormously. Nobody has exactly the same insulin response or the same. And I would say to these doctors, is it possible? Do you think that there might be variations in the cytochrome P450 detoxification system? Which we all know there's got to be variations from person to person, such that a small subpopulation of people might not be able to handle the triple load vaccination and that in those susceptible people with defective or not optimally functioning cytochrome P450 detoxification systems, 
could they be susceptible? Could there be a connection between a vaccination that overwhelms their system and a reaction such as autism? Is it possible? Every single one of them has said, of course it is. And I say, well, why aren't we discussing that? They say, because we want to still be able to practice medicine in this country. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you, I was never an anti measles, rubella, mumps vaccination guy at all. But I'm perfectly capable of understanding that there is a subpopulation who is unable to process that. And maybe we should at least investigate what it is about that subpopulation. So maybe they could be on a different schedule, maybe not get all three at once. This, this line of questioning has so been demonized that you can't even ask the question because then you're an anti-vaxxer and you're right. anti-science. Dude, this is upside down world. Yeah. It's just, it's frightening and, and it's, um, it's, it's, it should scare everybody because it really does dampen free speech. It dampens the ability to have reasonable questioning about things that, you know, if we weren't able to reasonably question the low fat recommendations, if we weren't reasonably able to question the way we measure cholesterol, we would not be, we would not be doing, making any progress on any of this stuff. And right now they're silencing any discussion that deviates from the vaccine narrative. And by vaccine narrative, I don't mean that we shouldn't pursue vaccines. They're helpful. They wipe yeah. out polio. There are things that vaccines do. That, but we could also be pursuing a narrative that says, let's build our natural immunity. And the people who are talking about doing that are being silenced now. Well, you know, you know what's interesting, John, is it could be a case where you can sit and talk about, hey, take some vitamin D, you know, take your, your zinc, take your, your vitamin C, and get a vaccine, and they will still tell you, you're an anti vaxxer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just like, um, I, I remember saying to someone early on in the process when we didn't know anything about COVID. The, the one thing they were telling us at the beginning is if, if you don't have the N95 mask, remember that. Remember the N95 mask? Yeah, no, I, I, I know that's actually accurate information. Those are really the ones right. that, are, that actually work and they have to be properly fitted. They have to be properly fitted. If you don't have the N95, it was said you shouldn't, a mask won't do anything. You need the N95 or it's nothing. Right. Okay. Where's my N95? Well, you can't get that one. Why not? They, they haven't made enough. Okay. So they were at they were at least saying at the beginning, no mask. And then all of a sudden it was mask, 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 mask. And I went, okay, is there new information? No, the mask will do something. Well, I don't know about that because I would go around to the hardware store, I would have my mask on, I go to the grocery store, the drugstore, places you go during COVID, I would see people wearing the mask below their nose. You know, you, know, you would see people with thin faces and you can see big gaps on, I have somewhat of a thin face, my cheeks go in, big gap. There's no way for me to, to wear that mask correctly. And, and I did it, it was just show. You know, I do it because you want to be a good citizen and you want to be a good citizen and you don't want to, yeah, I don't want some Karen coming up to me. But I was sitting there going, this is all for laughs. This is just all for laughs because there's no way this mask is doing anything at all. Maybe doing two, it may help a percent, two percent. I mean, I do it just to, because right, that's right, 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 right. But I don't want to be an asshole. How do but, we go from N95? And then when I went to LA, I, I had to go to LA in the middle of the pandemic to, to shoot parts of my next movie. I wasn't even getting on an airplane. I, I drove across country, right? Mm -hmm. I got there. And I saw something, Johnny, I thought I was in Bizarro World. Tell me. People were in their cars. I didn't see this where I was. Oh. People wore the mask. People are in yeah. their cars with two masks and a shield over their face. The, you know, the big plastic welder shield? Yeah. I know. I'm sitting there going, 
people walking down the street. At least here where I live in normal world, people would have the mask hanging off their ear if they're walking down the sidewalk. Because you walk into the store, you put it on, right? Of course. Two masks and a shield is like, what the fuck is going on? I, I was in bizarro world when I got to LA. I couldn't oh, believe what I was seeing. You know where I live. I, I do. Yeah. Out here in the hills and the mountains, it's deserted. It's beautiful. I'm hiking. I see people on the hill of Mahalan Drive in the friggin' day with masks on. Folks, to understand Mulholland Drive, if it was crowded with people, <laughs> you might see another human being. If you jog, <laughs> let's say you're jogging. You might see... Let's say you go for a five mile jog back. You, you go 2.5 in one direction, two point back. If the place is crowded, yeah. Yeah, you might see one person. If it's crowded. Yeah. But here, here's the, you know, I didn't want to say this. I, I heard a bunch, I watched the news the other day. I, I actually, since the pandemic, I actually went cable free. I don't even watch the news now anymore. It's been very good for my mental health. But um, I, I saw this protest and these people were, these were anti, they were anti the government telling us what to do and the vaccines. And they were holding signs saying no medical tyranny. And, you know, I, I know you don't talk about politics, but I come from, I don't talk about mine either, but I certainly come from a progressive, more left-leaning, democratic, New York Jewish family. And th those I hate, hate to say it, but the left has been one of the most judgmental and one of the most rigid um, in, in this debate because they are like all those people who are marching, they're all crazy. They have their science deniers. They should be sent to an island and shot. They're making society, you know, and here's what I was thinking when I watched that because I'm always trying to figure out what, what's the commonality here? How can we bring people together, not get them further apart? And I looked at that, and I tried to look at it with objective eyes, and I thought, I know what medical tyranny is. I understand how those people feel. I may not agree that uh, with, the, with, with, their, with what they believe should be done, like let's just not get vaccinated, let's not wear masks, let's deny. I'm, but I understand that emotion because I've seen medical tyranny my entire friggin' professional life. I've seen it with doctors who fire patients if they won't go on statins. I've seen it when they tried to jam that low fat diet down our throat. I've seen it when people can't get insurance because their cholesterol isn't low enough. That's medical tyranny. I understand how those people feel. They're not nuts. And, and I think the first step to having any kind of partisan coming together on this vaccine thing is for each side to realize the other side is not fucking crazy. There are well, really good luck with that, Johnny. That ain't going to happen because the left is getting lefter and the right is getting righter. And it's not going to, you know, it, everybody is now dug in. Heels are dug in on both sides and no one is willing to talk. It's a few people like me that's in the middle, a guy like you that's in the middle going, Hey guys, I can see. As a matter of fact, when I talk to friends of mine on either side, they're going, when I go, well, you know, maybe, maybe they have a point. No, they don't. No, they don't. And when you talk to the other side, maybe they have a point. No, they don't. It's crazy. These people are nuts. And, and they, they turn red and purple in the face. And I'm like, how do you care that much? You know, you want to get the vaccine? Get it. You want them to die anyway. You're saying they're going to die if they don't get it. Guess, guess what? You're going to win. You're going to get what you want. They're going to die if you believe they're going to die. But they're going to give it to their grandmother. Yeah. Okay, well, they're going to die and they're going to kill their grandmother. I don't know. I can't, I can't fix stupid at this point. You know, it just drives, the whole thing drives me nuts. I, I don't know. Johnny, have you been flying around since the pandemic? Have you been on planes? I went to one trip for a conference um, last month, and I'm going to, um, I've got two trips coming up in the fall. I'm fine with both of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm flying around again, too. And um, the first time I flew, um, I couldn't get a direct flight. And uh, they, they dropped me down in Atlanta, um, you know, giant airport, as you know. And uh, it was the first time I'd been on a plane in well over a year. I was shocked. Oh, wow. the size of people now. People oh. gotten, and, and, you know, I, I, at the beginning of COVID, when they told us we would be locked down for 15 days and in 30 days, I went, 
oh, there's going to be the COVID-15. No, there's the COVID-50. Yeah. Human beings are now way heavier than they were before COVID. That's number one. Number two, and tell me if you've noticed this. I don't eat and drink when I fly. Now, when I go to Europe, it's a longer flight. Yeah, I might eat something. Usually I bring my own heart ball eggs or something, that kind of thing. Um, I've even had a cocktail on the plane, that kind of thing on here. But flying around, if I can't go anywhere for five hours, four hours without eating, I got a damn, I got an issue, right? So I'm on the plane. And the first time I was on the plane, I, I know you probably heard the thing. You, you're in the terminal. Keep your mask up, FFA. Keep your mask. Do not pull your mask up, sir. Get your mask up, Matt. Matt, uh, sir, it's below your nose. Mask, Matt. We got on the plane, and they said before we took off, maybe four or five times, mask up at all time. There's no reason for you, even when you go to the bathroom, keep your mask right. up. We can't be in there with it. Mask, 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 mask. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I shall not because I just know that if, I, I'm worried. Boy, if mine droops down below my nose when I'm sleeping. They're going to stop somewhere and kick me off the plane. That's the way I think, right? Well, I think all of a sudden they come around the food tray and they start giving everybody pretzels and everything else, and they're pulling their mask down to eat. And I'm looking at that and I go, okay, if the science mattered that much, they wouldn't be serving food at all on this plane. Good point. Am I right? I mean, if it matters that much. If that's what you're talking about, if you're wondering why there is no consistency in these policies and why they're, don't ask me. Yeah, it and makes no sense. Know. It makes no sense. It's a, it's a, it's a tricky world we're in. Uh, you know, Johnny, if they just make you and me president, vice president, you could be the president, I'd be the vice president. We could fix it all, right? <laughs> we could fix it all, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> People should, I think the, 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 I think what we're both saying, if we were going to summarize this, is if we could just do a little less talking and a little more listening, yeah. you might find that the people on the other side aren't the demon. They actually have points. They actually share many of our values. I mean, look, the people who are yelling about individual freedom and the people who are yelling about public safety, those are values everybody has. It's just a matter of which one may be more predominant. But if you demonize the enemy and say they have no point whatsoever, they're all crazy, they're all denying the truth, what only you, your side has the truth, we're not gonna get anywhere. It's gonna get more polarized and, and the truth is gonna be lost and we're all gonna be tribes fighting each other. Well, you know, Johnny, the one thing I have noticed living where I live now, I have a lot of Democratic friends and a lot of Republican friends. And what I've noticed is the ones that are our age, between my age and your age, and even older, they, you know, the Democrats don't believe what the left is saying, the, the, the real leftist, and the Republicans aren't believing what the real right wing wackos are saying. I, I right? think that's generally true. I think there's 10 or 15% on each side that are intransient. They will never move. They are locked in there. But I think about 80% and they get the most, the most um, print and media and internet and Twitter. That's the 15, those 15% at the end, but the 80% in the middle is what you're talking about. And um, I think that's where we are. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck right dab in the middle. And it doesn't matter what I am. And you know, it, it, my thing is, what are you talking about? My, my the scary part is I think most of the young kids coming around are dug in on the right and dug in on the left. And that could be a problem, right? Because they have to become grown ups one day, they're going to be running this show. Right? So who's to say, we, hopefully, we'll be long gone when that happens. Well, we'll have a few talks before that before uh, we're long gone and we'll, we'll take the temperature and see if things are moving in a better direction. They certainly couldn't move in a worse direction. Well, Johnny, tell people before I let you go, tell people where they can find you, uh, because I do love what you're doing out there. You got some books out there. Give some people some some Johnny Bowden, uh, no H and Johnny, J O N N Y B O W D E N. And I have a website and at Johnny Bowden on Instagram and just look me up. I've got all kinds of stuff going on. He's out there. He's an interesting guy. You will like this guy. We've had coffee together. We've we had, have. Uh, 
Johnny came out one night. I was doing one of my shows. Johnny was in the, I looked out and I was like, Johnny's here. Now I got to do a good job. You were great, man. Are you still uh, doing I, No, I, with COVID, I shut all that down, but I'm, I'm going to start getting on stage again at some point. But, that was great, man. Um, good. Yeah, Mike August was always going, hey, I can put you on stage in Connecticut. I'm like, they don't know who I am in Connecticut, Mike. You know, and, <laughs> good point. Yeah, I'm gonna go to. You want me to go to a comedy club and start telling people about cholesterol? It's not gonna <laughs> fly. <laughs> well, Vinny, it was great talking to you, and I hope we do it again soon. Hang on, I want to say goodbye to you off the air, folks. If you like what's going on here, you know what to do. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, go to vinnytartars.com. Click through the banner. Puts a little coal on the fire, gets our train down the track. You'll find all of Johnny's books on my Amazon page. They're there. Go check them out. Also, we have a super fan page at vinnytotteries.com. And Andy Schreiber wants me to remind you guys that our new fish oil, the EPA DHA with krill, is now out there. So go check it out at purevitaminclub.com. On behalf of Johnny Bowden, my name is Vinny Totterich. Put life into living and do it with.